In this video, we're going to see how we can find a target for each of our units in a pure ECS game in Unity. We're going to tag our entities and create systems for finding a target and moving towards it. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in-depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. So one of the main benefits of ECS is getting massive performance. So that makes it perfect for games with lots of units, like for example an RTS. That means it's essential to have your units be able to look for targets. So let's do that in our pure ECS game. We're going to start off with entities with a simple unit texture and others with a target texture. Then we're going to see how we can tag each entity to identify its type using a simple component. Then make a system that will only run on entities with that unit tag and look for entities with a target tag. After that, we're going to create a component to keep track of when the unit has a target. And finally, another system to move the unit towards the target in order to destroy it. All right, so those are the very steps we need to be able to do our system, so let's get to it. Here is the starting point. I just have a simple unit texture and a bunch of targets being randomly spawned. We want him to locate the closest target and move towards it. So let's see how this is set up. Here in the scene, I simply have this game handler object. So let's see the script. Here's the script where we're setting up all of our ECS code. Now, if you're not familiar with ECS, check out my getting started video, which covers how ECS works and what all of this does. Check the link in the description. So the first thing we do is get a reference to the entity manager. Then we have a function to spawn a unit and another one to spawn a target. As you can see, the components for the unit and the target are very similar. We just have a translation for the position, local to world and render mesh in order to be able to see it and a scale in which the unit is larger than the target. So up here, we're simply spawning a single unit and various targets. All right, so this is our starting setup. Now, the first thing we need in order to be able to find the closest target is to be able to identify which entities are units and which are targets. As you can see right here, they both have the exact same components. So right now it's impossible to realize which one is a unit and which is a target. So in order to identify them, we're going to create simple components that won't work as tags. So down here, we just need to make a struct, let's call it unit, and it implements I component data and it is completely empty. So this empty component works as our unit tag. Then let's make another one for our target. And that's it. All right, so now we can go up here and on our spawn unit function, we're going to add it with the type of unit component. And down here on the target, we add the type of target component. So just like that, we now have two different archetypes, one that contains a unit tag and one with the target tag. This way we can now identify which entity is which. So we can now run the code. And here, everything still looks the same. We have random targets and our random unit. But if we check on our analysis entity debugger, here you can see we have two chunks, one chunk that contains the unit tag and one that contains the target tag. As you can see in here, we just have one unit and here we have 10 targets. So just like that, we have two specific types of entities. Now let's see how we can make a system in order to cycle through them. So here, let's make a new script. This will be our find target system. Now in here, we get rid of mono behavior since we are working in ECS. Instead, we're going to extend a component system. Now here we have our on update function. And it's in here that we need to cycle through all of our units and only our units. This code is not meant to run on the targets. So for that, we use the entities. And now here we add the filter. Let's add the filter with all, meaning it will only select the entities with all of these components. So in here, we simply pass in the unit tag component. And then we do a for each. So this for each action will only run on entities that contain the unit component. Now in here, let's use the delegate that receives a parameter for the entity. So here we have our code running on all entities with the unit tag. Now here, just make sure that it is working correctly. Let's just do a simple debug.log and pass in the entity. Okay, so let's see, and we should be able to see only one entity being displayed. 
And up here in the console, you can see only one entity is running that code. Okay, awesome. Now, just for testing to make sure this is all working right, let's spawn another entity. So in here, instead of just one, let's spawn two. Let's see. And yep, there you go. Our code is now running on entity zero and entity one. And if you go into the entity debugger, you can see that the zero and one are indeed our units. So zero and one are units and the two is a target. Okay, awesome. So we now have this system running only on specific entities and we're specifying those entities using the unit tag component. So now in here, let's see how we can cycle through all the targets. And in order to do it, it's actually quite simple. We just go here inside our four inch and we do another four inch. So again, we grab the entities, and in this case, we want with all of the target tag, and we do a for each on that. So here we have code cycling through all the entities with the target tag. Again, in order to verify that this is working correctly, let's do another log on our target entity. And up here you can see our code is cycling through each unit and through each unit it goes through each target. Okay, so we have pretty much all of our cycling logic working. Now all we need to do is to calculate which one is closest. So let's go into our system. And now in order to get the closest, that means we need the position for both the target and the unit. So up here, let's add a reference to the translation component. And down here also. And now all we need is to find which one is our closest target. So for starters, let's define an entity variable to hold our closest target entity. Now by default, entity is a struct, so we cannot simply add null. Instead, we need to add entity.null. Then here, when we're cycling through our targets, for the first one, it's very simple. If the closest target entity equals entity.null, then we have no target. So we set the closest target entity to this target entity. And if not, then we need to calculate which one is closest. So here we do a if math and do a distance between the unit translation dot value. So this is the current unit position and the target translation dot value. Now in order to get this distance, we cannot use the reference inside another cycle. So we need to go here and store a flow three for the unit position, which will be the unit translation dot value. Okay, now we want to make sure that this distance is closer than the one that is already the closest. However, in here we only have an entity, so we also need to store a float three for the closest target position. And here when we set, we also set the target translation dot value. Okay, then here we check that. So if this current target is closer than the closest target, then this one becomes the new closest. And that's it. This is our logic for finding the closest target using pure ECS. So down here after the cycle, we have our closest target. Now let's add a visual debug line in order to be able to see it. So we do if the closest target, if it is not null, then let's do a debug dot draw line between the unit position towards the closest target position. All right, so let's see and see if our unit is indeed pointing towards the closest target. And yep, here's our unit and five random targets. And as you can see, it is correctly identifying down as the closest. Let's reset the scene and try again. And yep, there, that one is the closest. And that one is closest. Okay, awesome. So we have successfully written a system that looks for targets closest to a unit. Now we need to think about how we're going to set the target on that unit. Now in normal object-oriented code, you would have a unit class which would have a field to hold the current target. So in ECS, your first approach might be to store the active target in the unit component. However, in this case, since we are using this as a simple tag, that is probably not the best way to do it. So let's go with a different approach, which is we're going to have a component to hold that target. So when the unit finds a target, it adds that component. And when the target is destroyed, it removes that component. So let's see how we can do that. In here, we simply create a new struct. Let's call it has target. And we also have iComponentData. 
In this case, we're going to add a field, and the field will be a public entity for our target entity. Okay, so we now have a specific component that we're going to add to our units when they find a target. So now here, when we have our code looking for a target, then we find our target. And here we add the has target component. So in order to do that, we use the post update commands. This is an entity command buffer. In order to add a component into our entity, we're going to add a new component of our has target, and we're going to pass in the target entity as our closest target entity. So when the update finishes, this code will run, which will add this component to this entity. So that way our normal unit component still works perfectly like a tag and our targeting data is held in a different component. So now for example, instead of doing our debug draw line here, we can do it on a separate system. So let's make here a simple debug system. So we just make, let's call it has target debug and we implement component system. And here we just cycle through all entities that have the has target component. And here we do our debug dot draw line between the entity position and towards the target position. Now in here we need to get the position for the target. So we need to go and grab the entity manager in order to get component data. And here we can pass in our target entity. So it has target dot find the target entity in order to get the translation component. So we grab the translation for the target and we use that to draw our line. So this is how you get component data for a specific entity. So you have our target entity stored in our component. Then we have our has target debug component system in order to simply draw a line between the entity and its target. Okay, so let's test. And here we have a quick error because we're adding the has target multiple times to the same entity. So let's see why that is. Here it is on our find target system. Essentially we're running this on every unit. And if we do find a closest target, we add a new has target component. So the simple solution is to make sure that this find target system only runs on units that do not have a target. So we can use a different filter in here. We can use the with none of type has target. So this code will only run on entities that contain the unit component, the translation component, and no has target component. So as soon as we add the has target, the next time the update comes, it will not run this code. So again, we cycle through our targets, grab the closest, add the has target component. The has target component contains a field for the target entity, and then we have our debug component, which will simply do a debug draw line. So now let's see, and we should be able to see a line pointing to the closest target. And if there it is, the unit is correctly locating the closest target. And if we go into the entity debugger, here you can see our unit entity. There you go, there's the unit tag component. And it also has the has target component, which has a target entity. All right, so everything is working. We have our unit finding targets. Now let's go back into the code and make another system in order to move our unit towards the target and destroy it. So for that, let's create a new system. This will be our unit move to target system. And in here, here we do a cycle entities for each. And we're only going to cycle through entities that have the has target component. Now in here, we're going to do very much the same thing that we were doing here on our debug. We need to get the target component. And then we move our entity towards the target. So that means we also need to get a reference to the translation component. We simply move our translation towards the target direction multiplied by move speed multiplied by time dot delta time. All right, so we have our unit moving towards the target. Then let's check the distance. If we are within a certain distance, then we want to destroy our target. So for that, again, use the post update commands. 
in order to destroy the entity we're going to destroy the has target dot target entity and then we're also going to do another post update command in order to remove a component from this entity so up here we need a reference remove the component from the unit entity of type of has target all right so that's pretty much it so we cycle through every entity that contains a has target component since it has a has target that one has a target entity so we grab the translation from the target entity we calculate the direction define a move speed move the unit towards the target then we check the distance and if it's close enough we destroy the target entity and then destroy the has target component all right so as you can see our logic is very nice and easy to follow so let's see so here he is moving he finds that one gets close destroys gets close destroys finds the next closest keeps moving towards it as soon as he gets close destroys and moves to the next one all right awesome so as you can see we have our unit finding their targets and moving towards that target the target gets destroyed when he gets near and everything is working great so here you see a simple example of how to organize your code using a pure ECS system. So you have tags for the unit and our target. We have a component to keep track of which units have a target. Then we have a system which runs through all of those units without a target and finds a target. And we have another system which only runs on units that already have a target and moves them towards that target. So now let's try this out with a bunch of units and also a target spawner. So let's go up here and spawn a bunch of units. Let's also spawn some targets every once in a while. So we have a simple timer running every 100 milliseconds, spawning 10 targets. Let's see. And just like that, with multiple units finding multiple targets, we find an error right away. And the error is the entity does not exist. Now, the error in this case, as you can see, only happened when we spawn multiple units. And the reason is because we have two or more units going towards the exact same target. So we have this system running on multiple units. And the thing is, when the first unit reaches its target, it destroys the target entity. However, the second unit is still going for that same target. However, that entity has now been destroyed. So here we need to make sure that we check if the target still exists before we move towards it. So that's quite simple. We just go here and we go into the entity manager and we can simply test if a certain entity exists. So in this case, our has target dot target entity. If it does exist, then we do all this. Okay. And if not, then we want to remove the unit has target from this unit. Okay. That should fix our error. Let's see. And yep, now we have a bunch of targets being spawned and all our units constantly moving towards the closest target. So they are all independently moving around, looking for the target closest to them. As soon as they find the target, they move towards it and they destroy that target. So we have each entity working independently. So here you have learned how to tag entities in order to identify them, make a system to cycle through all the entities that you want, create a specific component to handle target data, and another system to handle units that do have a target. Now in here, all we used was pure ECS and only ECS. I did it that way just to keep the video easy to follow and understand how to cycle through entities. So that's why in here, in order to find the target, we're cycling through all the entities and then through all the targets. As you see, this works. However, in order to get the most benefits, we should use the complete dots tech stack. So that means that now that we have all this code working, we should jobify our systems in order to benefit from massive performance so that we can have multiple units looking for targets at the same time. So stay tuned for the next video where we're going to do just that. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you liked the video, subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials. Post any questions you have in the comments and I'll do my best answering. Alright, see you next time.